Success is hard. But I have news for you. Having lived in a car for three years, being not successful is hard too. Now here's the difference between the two hards. Being not successful and hard and trying to become successful and hard. When you are not successful and hard, there are no options. You can't decide where you're going to dinner. You can't decide if you're going to buy a pair of shoes. You can't decide if you're going on vacation. You can't decide what you're going to eat. You don't have options. On the road to success, it's hard, but it creates options for you. It does. Look, see, people get hung up on the fact that I'm not a millionaire yet. But hold up, man. There's joy in the journey. See, on your way to becoming a millionaire, how about if you celebrate making $50,000 a year? Don't you remember when you didn't have that? Then when you get $100,000, there's another celebration. Because guess what? It's two times more than 50. You make $150,000, there's another celebration. See, there's joy in the journey. But people, people get bogged down with, I ain't a millionaire yet, and they remain unhappy. And now you block all the rest of the blessings God got for you. Because God, the more you're grateful, the more he gives you to be grateful for. So now, God gives you 150, you got your lips stuck out. Why would he give you some more stuff not to be grateful for? A couple of things kept me going. Most of it was messages that I had learned from my mother. But I learned something about faith. Faith comes from hearing, not from having heard. My mother was telling me those messages years ago. But during my homeless years, I would rehear them, and that's when it mattered. And I had this such a grand dream and vision, I was willing to push through to see what the vision was going to be, to see if I could get to the dream. And I kept hearing my mother say words like, God didn't bring you this far to leave you. So I said, okay, well, maybe he ain't left me. Let me just see if I can wake up tomorrow, something change. You know, then I kept hearing stuff like faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. Or say, okay, cool. So I don't see nothing but this homelessness right now, but I think I'm going to make it one day. And I just kept going, man. I just kept. Now, now, now don't get me wrong. There was days I wanted to quit. A lot of days. I almost drove back to Cleveland several times and just gave up. But. You know, man, your dreams have to be bigger than all your fears. If you get, see, that's why you have to have big dreams. Because your dreams have to be bigger than all your fears and all your consequences. What makes people go back is you dream too small. See, your problem in life ain't if you aim too high and you miss it. Your problem in life is if you aim too low and you hit it. That's, you messed up now. So, when you aim a to the moon and you miss, you still amongst the stars. So it kind of keeps you motivated a lot longer, man, to help you push through. Because everybody's gonna have to have a push through moment. Because everybody has a turn back moment. The key to making it is you can never turn back. See, God is always coming. See, look, man, when you ask God for something, God boxes it up. Put your name on it and he ships it the day you ask for it. Soon as you ask for it, he ships it. The problem with the package is he never tells you the date that it's going to arrive. If he did that, it would destroy the one element that he requires, your faith. So God sends your package, but he only delivers to Faith Street. If you step off of Faith Street and you go over here to I Don't Believe It Boulevard, he don't ship there. If you step over here to I Don't See How Avenue, he don't ship there. 
If you step over here to Ain't No Way Circle, he don't ship there. The package only goes to Faith Street. What happens to the average person is that when the package arrives and you ain't on Faith Street, it's just like the post office and FedEx, UPS. If you ain't there, the package got to go back. You know how many packages you got in heaven with your name on it that got sent back? This is real talk, man. This is, this is how it works. Being successful, y'all, is not a magic trick. You have to learn the principles of success. And you can be successful at anything. You really can, man. I don't have no education. I'm not really like a school smart, none of that. And I got a lot of people who work for me got degrees. See, when I don't, when I don't know something, I, I pay somebody to know it. Just come stand around it. I come down here and do the gifts. I keep telling the jokes. I'm telling you, God has an incredible life for you. All you got to do is ask him for it. Be willing to put in the work. But now this work part is hard. Success is hard. But let me ask you a question. Ain't not being successful hard too? So now which hard you want? You want the hard with some options and some benefits, or you want the hard when ain't nothing going on? I'm gonna take the hard with the option and benefits. Give me that hard. Let me try that. How much time do you have left? When you start thinking about that, we don't know. We don't know. Bobby took all the greatness and all of the talent and all of his abilities to his grave with him. One other thing he could have put in parenthesis under his name, he didn't use all his stuff. And most of, most of us do that. Most of us don't use the stuff that we have brought into the universe. And we want to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to start living life with a sense of urgency and using what we've got. Using ourselves up. Sharing what we brought into the universe to share. Because if we don't, nobody else will. Stop wasting valuable time knowing that if we begin to live our lives as if each day were our last, our lives will take on take on a whole new meaning and take on a whole new expression, valuing each moment that we are blessed with. The next thing that begins to nurture that hunger, honor yourself as your word. Don't give your word out lightly. When you throw your word out there and you don't honor it, it makes a statement about you. If you decide to maintain a sense of integrity with yourself, that if I speak it, I'm going to live it. It's who I am. And I'm going to be very cautious in how I give my word to others. And most of all, with the commitments that I make to myself. Because I want my life to reflect my words and honoring who I am and what I express. Another challenging area in terms of nurturing and developing that hunger in yourself is learning the art of becoming single-minded. Learning how to concentrate. Learning how to focus in. And you'll be surprised of the things that you're able to do. When you learn how to block things out, when you learn how to keep thine eyes single, you'll be surprised of the ideas that will come to you, of the people that you'll be able to attract, of the opportunities that you'll be able to see. You begin to see things that have been standing there looking you in the face saying, I can't believe this has been here all this time. I'm nothing no more than you. You know, my job has been exceptional, though. I've been very blessed in that I've lived a life God has enabled me to pursue my passion and tied it to my gift. I'm gifted at comedy, and I've been able to pursue it. So I wake up every day, and for a living, I play music and tell jokes. How big of a blessing is that? But you know, people, 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 they look at that, 
But, but see, you lose sight of the fact that I'm 54, though. And you, and you don't know the fact that I've been doing this 27 years in order to get to the point where I can wake up and play music and tell jokes for a living. It's like my guest, Tim Gannon, who explained the fact that he wanted to play polo. He didn't buy a pony till he was 40. He saw the first race at 16, the first match at 16. He didn't get that till he was 40. But so people look at him as the owner of the Outback Steakhouse and they go, wow. But they have no idea, no idea the journey and the stress. And, and, and what I want to talk to you about is stress. What stress is, what it really is. How it's necessary if you're planning on getting to where you're trying to go to. See, stress is God's way of training you. It's, pre it's preparation. But what most people do is, see, once you get stressed, you don't want that no more. So now you give up, you through. I'm stressed, so I don't want it. Nobody likes stress. You know, I work with a trainer. I go, I go, I have to work out. You know, 54, I'm supposed to, really, I ain't nothing fly, nothing like that. I, really, I am, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, you, you've been to your reunion. And you didn't know who was talking to you. Because you was going, whoa. And then, and then you're going to look in the mirror and go, okay, I need to check myself. Do I look that bad? Because some people just let themselves go. But you got to, in order to develop and to change and to grow, stress is necessary. So you got to be willing to go get it every day. There's a story my father told me all the time. Now, I've heard it several different ways, but I'm just telling you the way my daddy gave it to me. He said, son, he said, every morning on the plains of the eastern Serengeti Desert, there arises a gazelle that realizes that he was run faster than the fastest lion, or he will be eaten and he will die that day. On that same desert arises in the morning a lion that realizes that he must run faster than the fastest gazelle or he will starve and he will die that day. He says, son, the moral of the story is, no matter who you is, when you wake up in the morning, you need to be running. No matter, and he says, no matter who you is, this proper grammar is who you are, but my daddy didn't do that and I was comfortable with it. And so what he taught me was a work ethic of, of how to work in order to get to where you want to go. You got to put yourself under some stress, though. See, stress is necessary. God is a trainer. This is what I have learned about it. And all I can tell you is, you know, how I got to be who I am. That's all I can share with you. I got no other stories for you. He got me to this point because from so far from what I done gathered in the process I'm in, he wants me to share my story with those that still trying to get there. And at, and at 40, you can still buy the pony. And by age 50, you can still have five world championships. But you got to be willing to get under some stress. See, stress is necessary. It's like, I, I can't believe what Bishop was talking about because I had prepared this whole thing. And it's just amazing how he is, man. God be doing. See, that's what I've learned. God cold. He do it. He do it. He, he tricky with it. He, he got moves you won't even. He, three of the things I was going to talk about, he talked about. I'm, I, I got scared to talk. Because, you know, I mean, I, who am I? I'm up here, you know, following the greatest preacher of all times with similar subject matter. But I have a different take on it because I had a different walk. So you see, the, the part he was talking about, that seed. See, I'm a seed. I really am. I, see, but a seed has to be planted. A seed got to have dirt put on top of it. If you take a seed and throw it on the concrete and walk off, the sun just burn it up. But guess what? Logically, in my mind, it doesn't make sense 
that to grow something, you should dig a hole, put it down in there, and cover it with dirt. Logically, that don't make no sense to me. But oh, though. See, dirt is necessary for growth and development. Dirt builds character. Dirt, dirt gives you the push-through factor. Dirt makes you come with it when you don't feel like coming with it no more. And you get dirt in a lot of different ways. All of y'all that had dirt thrown on you. And dirt ain't always what you want. It's somebody talking about you down on your job. It's somebody accusing you of something that you didn't do. It's somebody telling you you ain't going to make it. It's somebody sharing information about you that ain't true. That everybody get dirt put on them. But see, when you're getting put under that stress, please know God is always working. Kurt Franklin's song, God is always working. So I smile because I know he back there. See, that dirt builds character in you. When they talking about you, it teaches you to withstand it. Then it gives you something to push through. So when you put the seed and you put the dirt on it, if you understand stress, stress really ain't just dirt. Stress, see, they don't call it dirt when they plant it. They call it soil. Because, see, soil has nutrients in it. What the nutrients, when people talking about you, dogging you, lying on you, backbiting, stealing from you, talking about you, they're actually putting nutrients in you. They're building character. You got character now. So now, and now, the seed, if they put a camera under the ground, you'd have seen the seed sprout open and start coming through the dirt. Because the dirt is necessary so you can prove yourself. You know, if you don't really want to be, everything you see above ground that blossoms and plants and grows and that's beautiful, it was underground one time. All them potatoes, collard greens, they was underground one time. Them apple trees, they was underground one time. So they had to prove themselves. See, you want to be successful, well then you got to prove yourself. You got to push through the dirt. You got to come up through here. You got to come out, then you sprout, and then Bishop say, then you become a tree. Next thing you know, you got fruit. So when you under stress, take the stress for what it is. Don't get fooled. Don't just think, I don't run. Man, Lord must not mean for it to be. What you tripping for? What you talking about? How you think you're gonna be a plant, a tree, a flower, a bush, and ain't no stress? How you gonna get to be that without no dirt? Didn't they do Jesus? How you figure you supposed to get up out of here? He was pretty perfect. We ain't even perfect. See, I expect dirt now. I expect people to talk about me. Matter of fact, I look forward to it now. Do your thing, because if I can weather what happened to me and my family earlier, you can bring whatever you got now. There's some more stuff going around now that's about to happen. Bring it. Because now I have developed a character that is stress. Here's a habit that I do. Maybe it might be of some value to you. I get up in the morning and I start writing what great ideas that I can think of today that can improve me and that will enable me to reach my goal. And I just let my mind flow. Sometimes I write 15, 20 ideas. Some days it's more difficult than others. One idea can change your life. One idea can turn your life around. Deciding that you're going to focus to develop your skills. The guy was, was um, the new owner of a team, a team, a baseball team that was in the basement of the league when he took it over. He went to the pitcher and he said, what is your best throw? And he said, well, I got a good curveball and I've got a good fastball. And he went on talking about his different throws. He said, but tell me this, what is your best throw? He thought for a moment. He said, I've got a good fastball. He said, that's all I want you to work on. Nothing else. Just develop your fastball. The next year, they went to the World Series. Most people don't know where their fastball is. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. 
They have skills and abilities, but if you don't nurture them, if you don't develop them, they will never serve you. Your gifts can take you many places if you develop your gifts. Discouragement can creep in secretly, hide behind clothes, makeup. Discouragement is so bold that it will even hide behind a smile. It will always ride to work with you. And if it doesn't catch a ride going to work, it'll catch a ride on the way back home. If you listen at discouragement, it will cause you to make bad decisions. It will cause you to think that life is not worth living and secretly behind the facade of a smile and a good morning and a praise the Lord and a how are you, you will wonder if you're ever going to get out of what you're into. When spontaneity is discouraged, authenticity, realness, that 100 thing, it suffers. And when authenticity is absent on one level, it shows up as a lack of confidence on another level. And if you can't see that, you will spend your life nursing a belief that you're not a confident person and that you'll never become one. We're all confident, but it shows up in different ways. Confidence is not all about walking around with your chest puffed out, talking loudly and looking for a fight. Confidence can look like love. It can look like humility. Confidence can look like kindness. So what does it mean when you look around and see that you live in a world where humility is weakness and kindness is suspect? What kind of confidence will you have? What happens to authenticity? See, it dissolves because you learn to live a prepackaged life. You learn to accept good enough and you stop thriving for spectacular. This is self-awareness. And when it clusters, it clusters and becomes what we call culture, a set of rules to live by. But what we get when we trade in spontaneity and authenticity is a sick culture. The people who wake up one day and decide, I can't do this anymore. I can't live by these rules. I refuse to live a prepackaged life. The ones who decide that only love drives out hate. That fear is not the whole story. That compassion and kindness matter. That mistakes happen, second chances are real, and that laughter can heal. These are the rebels in a sick culture. Don't deviate, don't procrastinate, don't become frustrated. All you have to do to win this battle is stay on track. There are moments that try the human soul so violently and so perplexing that if the truth were told, all of us have had moments that we wanted to throw up our hands and walk away. If you want to be a confident person, you have to take action. I, confidence is a result of doing something. And so many times people cheat themselves because they lack that confidence, so they don't do what they should do only to leave, say, ah, I wish I would have done that. I, I can remember when I was in my 20s, I went to a, a meeting with leaders that were older than I, and I was overwhelmed by the fact that I was truly, not trying to be humble, I was truly the least in the room. And I could have learned so much from them. In fact, they gave times for us to ask questions, and I held back. And I didn't ask questions, and I left that meeting, and I really realized how I cheated myself. And I determined that day that regardless of how intimidated I was going to become, I was never going to cheat myself again and that I was always going to ask the question, even though it, I figured it, it may be a real stupid question. What was I doing with my confidence? I was making a determination to take action on something that I didn't feel comfortable with. And trust me, I did. And each time I took action, it began to give me confidence. No robber robs an empty house. Nobody holds up a bag lady because she doesn't have anything to steal. If you're up under attack, there's something to be gained. 
The enemy would not send that level of battle against you if there were not that level of blessing before you. The level of battle you face is an indication of the level of blessings that you stand to receive. With every blessing, there is a battle. I want to leave this with you. As you look at your goals, be stubborn about your goals. Be stubborn. Don't give up on your goals. You will fail your way to success. Don't give up on your goals. Make no your vitamin, as Suzanne de Pass would say. Don't give up on your goal. Be stubborn about your goals. Be flexible and versatile. Ask for help. A lot of people won't do that because of ego edging God out. Because a lot of people, as a result of pride, pride, pride coming before fall. Ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. You don't have to figure it out. Get started. Do what you can with what you have. And God will do what you can. I would venture to say the greater the blessing, the greater the battle. You're being fought by imaginations, shadows, and ghosts. Some of you are stressed to death over what ifs and maybes. You've been stabbed by suppose. You lay in the bed wrestling with ghosts of what ifs and maybes and suppose and I think and I heard and I felt and you wake up tired in the morning because you, you might have slept but you didn't rest because all in your sleep you've been fighting. And I'm saying to you, if you keep going, if you keep looking for a way, where there's a will, there's a way. If you keep moving, if you keep falling forward, if you keep getting back up, something's going to happen. Bob Marley said something I like. He said, you never know how strong you are until being strong is all you have. Most people are governed by their emotions. They're having a hard experience in a head fight. You will never win a battle if you're having a hard experience in a head fight. You never know how strong you are until being strong is all you have. It's your only option and you'll discover if you don't panic, if you don't run, you discover you are stronger than you give yourself credit for being. Don't surrender. Don't give in. Just keep moving forward. Stay busy. Moving in the right direction. Looking, opening doors, knocking on doors. Finding a way out of no way. Why are we loyal to ineffectiveness? We vivid effectiveness for the weekend on a Sunday and a motivational message and a special television show. We, we love to visit it, but we are married to habits that are ineffective and we are loyal to things that we know don't work, but because this is how I feel. Whatever you do, don't lose your head. I am powerful, I am strong, I am successful, I am an achiever, I am abundant, I am rich, I am determined. Into your message, it's all hard, it's hard to hold on, it's hard to let go, but there's a reward on the other end of many of these hardships. You better choose reward or regret. There is always reward and regret attached to every decision that you make. You've got to die as you are now. You've got to be willing to give up who you are now for what you can become. I will try 100 times to get up, and if I fail 100 times, if I fail and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. 
But if I fail, I try again and again and again for as long as I try. There's always that chance of getting up and it's not the end until you've given up. You have to start living your life in expectation. You've got to start expecting great things to happen for you. In order for it to happen, if you live your life in expectations, that's what happens to you. If you live your life in despair, that's what happens to you. Disengage your sense of self, your sense of self-worth from achievement. Once you are wholly focused on sincere pursuit, everything changes. I am focused. I am disciplined. I am health. I am wealth. I am. I am. I am beautiful. I am wise. I am capable of anything. I'm someone who makes things happen. I am a powerful creator. I am filled with faith. I am blessed. I am grateful. I am a miracle. I am connected. I am God. I am more than my body. I am a powerful spirit. I am ready. I am focused. I'm a fighter. I'm more than enough. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. You can't just speak the words. You must feel them. Hope. Hold on. Pain things. Pain does have an expiration date. And when that pain ends, another one will surface, but you will be strong enough because you endured the current pain well. Everybody wants resurrection, but nobody wants the pain of dying to themselves. There's a pain that hurts you, and there's a pain that changes you. And so today, all I want you to do is make a decision to choose your heart. And you must believe them. Repeat them every day. Let them soak into your subconscious. Let the power become one with you. Ali said, I am the greatest. And he became the greatest. Are you ready to be great? I am. I am. Replace I want with I am. Instead of saying I want to be rich, say I am rich. I am wealthy. Say it. Feel it. Feel it until you believe it. I am bold. I am strong. I am successful. I am abundant. I am rich. I am determined. I am focused. I am disciplined. I am capable of anything. I am a powerful creator. I am limitless. I am. I am. The path, the war path, path of war, moving toward a battle, fighting towards war, the actual war against our nation's enemies, or the war against my own weaknesses. Preparing and, and sharpening my sword and honing my skills and maintaining the unmitigated daily discipline in all things. Where does it lead? It, it can lead to war. I'll never be rich, you what you want the moment. You change the frequency that your tower emits, different things come back to you. If you change your attitude, you change your altitude. Most of us go through life pretending. Pretending that we're satisfied where we are, pretending that everything is okay, pretending that, that we don't have any special goals or ambitions or desires. When really deep down inside, we do really want more because you have to judge a treaty by the fruit it bears, not the fruit that it talks about. See, a lot of people pretend that they want more out of life, but all you have to do is watch their actions. In fact, I am waiting, and I am ready, because it's a war against ignorance, so it leads to the war path, leads to, it leads to ownership of your life, and that is the war path, the path of fight. 
Certain things will no longer fit into your life. There's no place for it. In order to do something you've never done, you've got to be someone you've never been. So you've got to spend serious time reading, writing your goals down, reading scripture, anchoring yourself spiritually to handle the storms of life because they're going to come. So every day you have to sell yourself and get out of your mind those old thoughts, that old belief system. Every day you've got to sell yourself on that it's possible. But you got to put a new mind in you. You got to get out of your mind. You got to begin to restructure your thinking. Every day you've got to begin to recondition your mind. See, many of us go through life making choices, thinking it's our choices. You really have to work hard for a set of skills that matter to you. A fool never learns, a smart man learns from his mistakes, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. So you've got to completely divorce yourself from this notion of outcome and become completely obsessed with the idea of sincere pursuit. And so when you look at the night sky and that sense of awe grips you and calls something out of you right to respond to, your encounter with the infant, even your encounter with mortality, your encounter with finitude and limitation, all of that. In relationship to the internet, that sense of awe is also the calling forth of something out of you that can respond to the challenge of that infinite, well, that's the microcosm within know it's A reflection of the structure of the cosmos itself, that's the divine ideal. And it's not. See, let me share something with you. The easiest thing I've ever done was to earn a million dollars. The most difficult thing I've ever done was to believe it could happen to me. That was the most difficult part, to believe that given my circumstances, if my birth parents came down this aisle right now, I would not know either one if my daddy came up here or my mother came up here. Given the fact that I was born in an abandoned building on a floor, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, not having any college training, I used to feel all my life that people who had college degrees were more intelligent than me. I remember going to see the late Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, the author of the book, The Power of Positive Thinking. And I used to look at him up on stage and I said, I could do that. I would love to talk to people. I love to talk to people. And I said, I could do that. But then when I started going back to my car, my mental conditioning activated itself and it said, Les Brown, you can't do that. Only thing that's going to make you happy, my friend, in this year or any other is to step up. It's to raise the standard, it's to discover what you're capable of and feel that incredible power pushing through whatever's holding you back and get to the other side of more of your true self. That's what this game is all about, so life is real short, so you have all your traveling and of all your sleeping and of all your school. Out of all your entertainment, you've probably been half your life doing nothing, so out of 30 years, I might have about 16 years to be productive, so it's how we can all break individual lives now. You've got to completely divorce yourself from this notion of outcome and become completely obsessed with the idea of sincere pursuit. Now, why sincere pursuit? The reason to tie your sense of self, your self-esteem, why? Things that impress you, a poem that impresses you. Uh, when you attend a class, some of the ideas that impressed you, jot them down. If you read something in a magazine, write some ideas, take those out, put them in your journal. That we can learn in any direction. Nature has to make a choice with any species. Option number one, pre-program everything. Think of a horse. When a horse is born, it comes out, it can already run, jump, take care of itself. Bro, I gotta answer to God when it comes to Denzel. I'm gonna have to answer to God. Cause there's some stuff that I don't normally do, but if Denzel doing it, I'm doing it. I'm like, God, I'm sorry, but Denzel was at doing it. Keep a good journal the rest of your life. This will serve you well. So I want the same thing to happen to you. Value capture that you can resort to later. Go back over it, review it, and let it become valuable to you. So that's my first subject, personal development. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Develop the skills learn the lessons, take the classes, uh, absorb all that is being taught to you these days. And then later on, of course, you can sort it out, what's valuable to you and how to refine it for your business and for your life and for your future. The main thing is to get it and start this process of personal change, personal development. And let me say it one more time, if you will change, everything will change. You'll never be the same. Be built for maximum flexibility be able to adapt to your environment. A horse is a horse no matter where you put it, but a human 
depending on when and where it's born, depending on what it allocates its resources to, its time and attention, it can turn into a basketball player, a neurophysicist, a parent, a coach, a hairstylist. You literally get to choose. You get to decide what it is that you want to be good at. And I want you to think about the first time that you picked up a pair of scissors. You'll keep growing. As you look back on a few months, look back on a few years, you won't believe the progress you can make. Economically, your relationship with your family, your friends, telling you that whole process of committing yourself for personal change, personal value, can really make your life unique and worthwhile. Now let's cover the second step, the setting goals. We need to take a look into the future. There are four things to consider in terms of attitude. One is how you feel about the past. Best advice I can give you on that is treat the past as a school. Let it teach you the mistakes you've made, the things that went wrong, the things that didn't work. Don't use the past as a burden to carry and don't use the past as a club to beat yourself to death. Past losses, past failures, past mistakes. But let the past be a school. Tough school, maybe. We've all been through some tough stuff. So if you feel good about the past, draw from it for experience and let it teach you. You didn't know what you were doing. It didn't feel like it was an extension of your hand. But now, when you step into that role, when you show up, the way that everything feels, the way that you set it around your station, it's all like it was meant to be. It flows, you know, right where things are, how to cut somebody's hair, depending on the texture of the hair, the length, the quality, the age of the person, what they've done to it. You know it all, you know how to mix colors. All of that stuff is from training. But the irony is people don't stop and think about, hey, I got this far in this thing, simply by allocating the time and the energy, where else could I go? Could I pivot? And the answer to that question is yes. The human animal is designed to adapt. That is literally what we are sculpted to do. For me, the piece of advice that I always give to somebody, whether it's an entrepreneur or somebody who wants to be the greatest parent of all time, what is your goal? Okay, stop like trying to tell people you read six books and you ain't done nothing with them. I'm just believing religious people kill me. I read the whole Bible and ain't nothing changed. You the same person. It's like you get brownie points for reading the whole Bible. Like I go to church every Sabbath and you get brownie points for that. Like what do you get for that? It's about change, right? So I don't want you to read the Bible. I just want you to find three scriptures this year that you can read and let and do them. Read four books and do what they tell you to do. Matter of fact, read one book and do what the book tell you to do. Like for real, just read one chapter and put the book down. Do what the chapter tell you to do. I'm just being real. What 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 does it benefit you to read the whole book and you're not using it? All right, so this is the year of execution. Like we're gonna execute in small ways and those executions are gonna turn into something, right? So I heard something that revolutionized my life. All right, I'm just gonna show you today is gonna be nothing but me just going one through one through three on you. One, two, three, one, two, three, helping you. You've got to start with your goal. Everything works backwards from that. For me, I wanted to get rich. And the irony is, when I started on my entrepreneurial journey, I was literally saying that to people. I want to get rich. I just want to make a bunch of money. And so I started as a copywriter in a technology company because I'd failed to make it in film school. I actually ended up doing horrifically. And I, at the end of film school, I felt broken, embarrassed, lost. I had no idea where I was going, but I started teaching filmmaking. And as I was teaching that class, I realized, wow, I don't know enough to teach these students. I need to like research at night and practice to be able to come in and present this material. It's very important for you to believe that you are the one to make this happen. I remember this high school teacher, Mr. Leroy Washington, at the end of school, one June, it was just a few days before we were supposed to leave. And I just got my report card. And it indicated that I'd fail history and I'd fail English. And I would have to go to summer school. And I was feeling within myself that I was a failure, that I, I'm slower than most people and, and getting paperwork. And, and I was feeling down on myself and, and, and very negative. 
And Mr. Washington was giving a speech to the graduating seniors, and I was in 11th grade. And even though I wasn't supposed to be in there, I went in there because the speech he was giving, that speech was for me. And as he talked, my heart began to beat fast. Tears began to run by my eyes, and, and I was in the back just listening to him because he said, and he was a very dramatic man. I still talk to him to this day. He said, as graduating seniors of Booker T. Washington High School, I want you to know that you're blessed and highly favored, and that as you go toward the future, begin to know that you have greatness within you. So I heard Denzel Washington say he had a coach. I was like, what? I, I rewind. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm hearing things. So I went back and was like, Denzel Washington got an acting coach. I was like, why would Denzel need an acting coach? He Denzel. All right, but I said to myself, okay, I respect Denzel. Listen to me. I don't do movies. Anything Denzel come out with, I'm going to the movies. I don't care what it is. Denzel come out with it. it I don't even care if it makes sense or not. It's Denzel. I'm going to see it. I ain't Philadelphia. I'm not really, I don't know nothing about that. I'm like, but Denzel starting in it. Training day. I sat through training day and was like, it was like a crazy feeling like, yo, I ain't really getting this killing and the stupid stuff that they doing, but it's Denzel. And if just one of you here begin to envision yourselves as being blessed and highly favored to reach your goals, if just one of you capture the essence of what that means, that you have greatness within you and a responsibility to manifest that greatness. That you can make your parents proud, you can make your school proud, you can touch millions of people's lives and the world will never be the same again because you came this way. And the students gave him a rousing standing ovation. And as he left the auditorium, I ran down the steps and I caught him in the parking lot. I said, Mr. Washington? He said, yes. I said, do you remember me, sir? He said, no. I said, uh, my name is Leslie Brown. My mother, she works in the cafeteria here. I'm one of the twins, Leslie and Wesley. I said, Mr. Washington, but you know, you know, I got these big dreams. You know, I like talking to people. I love people. I said, I, I want to work with people. And I got this dream of buying my mama a home. Could, could I do that, Mr. Washington? He said, it's possible, Mr. Brown.